Hello sailors and welcome back to your next episode of Sail Smart. My name is Jake and today we're talking about clouds. Now clouds are a lot to do with the wind and the weather. The wind as sailors and windsurfers is really our currency, it's what we deal in. If we're doing well, recognising what the wind is doing, we're going to sail well. If we're not quite on the ball with that, we're not going to do as well. Clouds are our telltales for what the wind and the weather is likely to do in the future. So it's worth knowing and it's quite often something that actually top level sailors don't learn until later on in their career. So why not get ahead of the game, start learning something about clouds and learn how it can help you have a better time on the water. Now, a lot of what we know about clouds is due to a chap called Luke Howard. He lived a long, long time ago and he was the person who originally decided this cloud is gonna be known as this thing. And largely he categorized them into three different categories. Now they are cirrus, stratos and cumulus. Pretty funny words, but if we know why he picked those words, things can be a little bit more simple. So he picked these words because of what they mean in Latin. Now cirrus, cirrus means a wisp of hair. So if you see a cloud and it's kind of thin and wispy, that's gonna be a cirrus cloud. Cumulus, now this means pile or heap. So if you see a cloud and it's all piled and heaped up together, these are normally the classic candy floss fluffy clouds. That's a cumulus cloud. And stratos means layer or sheet. So if you see some clouds and it's just a level of cloud, that's probably a stratos cloud. Now, when he created these names, he actually created them so that you could mash them up together. So, be aware as we go through, some of the clouds might be a mix of these three different clouds. With clouds, we often associate them with different altitudes. Now altitude is a word that just means how high off the ground. Obviously clouds are pretty high in altitude, but they can get mega high right up to the top level of our atmosphere. So we're going to just have low altitude, medium and high altitude clouds. So let's start with cirrus. Cirrus clouds, as we know, means a wisp of hair. So these are normally thin clouds, wispy, uh, not a great deal to them. And these are right up in the top level of our altitude. They don't tend to block the sun. So it's normally still quite a bright sunny day with a few wispy clouds out and about. These clouds can mean that there is a weather front or change on the way, but normally they'll mean that today, the weather's pretty stable, so what you see, except for local features, is probably going to be what you get. Now, cumulus clouds. Remember that cumulus means heap or pile. These are our classic fluffy clouds, and these are normally in the low level of our atmosphere. Cumulus clouds are probably our biggest indication that something's going to change a bit sooner, perhaps within 12 hours, maybe 24, the weather might change. They can block out the sunlight, and it just depends how many there are. With a cumulus cloud, and when we draw a classic cloud, we normally draw it with a flat bottom and then puffy bits on top. And that's because that's what it looks like in the sky. If a cumulus cloud, that white fluffy puffy cloud, has a flat bottom, that's normally good for our weather. That means that the cloud is moving upwards and it's probably due to some nice warm weather and therefore we're going to have a good time sailing. So now to the third type. This is stratos and again this is in our lower level of the atmosphere. These are less definitive types of cloud. If you looked out the window and just said oh that's a bit of a grey day, that probably because of a stratos cloud. Now these can block out the sunlight and the days might look a bit duller. Now stratos clouds can also be related to fog. And I'm technically talking about a land fog here, but stratos clouds, if they get so low that they touch the ground, that's fog. Stratos clouds can often mean that there's a little bit of wind and rain on the way. Although the rain is normally only a drizzle, that misty, annoying rain that you can't really protect yourself from, seems to get you totally soaked, but when you look at it, 
it's only a little drizzle. So those are our three types of cloud. But here's a couple of other words that we can put into the mix to help us understand clouds. The next word I'm gonna add in is alto. Alto in Latin means high. So if we've got an alto cumulus, you've got it, it's a cumulus cloud that instead of being in the low, it's probably in the middle atmosphere. You can also add it to stratos, being an, al an alto stratos cloud. Now this isn't in the low atmosphere, but again, in the medium. The next word we can add in is nimbus, which is a fantastic word, but it just means rain. And you got it. If you add this to a cloud, it's because that cloud is going to bring rain. A nimbus stratus. That's obviously the stratus cloud. Big, flat sheet of cloud, but it's probably going to be a bit grey. You'll look at it and go, that's a rain cloud. And it's going to bring drizzle and rain. You could add it to cumulus, cumulonimbus. And that's going to be a big, fluffy cloud, going to be grey, but the cumulus clouds will bring a heavy rain. Normally, if it gets really heavy, it will turn into a thunderstorm. You can recognise that by how high a cumulonimbus cloud is. The very interesting thing about a cumulonimbus cloud is it's the only cloud that can grow through all the layers of altitude. And if it does that, if you see a very, very tall cloud, you can pretty much guess that you're going to have a thunderstorm on your hands. Some other generic things that can help with our knowledge of clouds and how they're going to affect our time on the water. One is warmth. Clouds will give you a bit of warmth, especially in the winter. If you are going sailing and it's a bit more of a wintry day and there's cloud, you're probably going to be a little bit warmer because the clouds will probably hold in the heat. If it's a winter's day and it's a clear day, those can often be those bone chilling, freezing cold days where your fingers feel like they're gonna fall off because there's no clouds to hold in the heat. Interestingly, in the summer, where the sun is at its hottest, that's probably gonna be the other way around. Standing in the sun in the middle of summer, obviously you're probably gonna be nice and warm. Clouds, as a general rule, are always falling. And that means moving from the top altitude all the way down to the bottom. Clouds are just doing this. That means they're going to change in the type of cloud that they are, and they're also going to change what that means for us. The only exception to this is that where you get a really hot climate or a really hot summer's day, the hot air rising can lift the clouds as well. Now this can actually cause rain. So, that's a little bit about clouds. Now, can you remember the three main types of cloud that I said? Right up the top, we've got our cirrus cloud. Down the bottom, we've got our cumulus and our stratos clouds. If we get one of those clouds that goes higher, we get an alto type of cloud. And if it's carrying rain, we've got a nimbus type of cloud. Now, time for you guys to get active at home. Time, parents, to find the cotton wool. We're gonna need some glue to create ourselves a worksheet. Next time you're out and about, you can have a look and see if what you think the clouds are relates to what the weather is today. Or maybe they'll give you a top tip as to what's coming later on. So that's all from me on clouds, guys. Don't forget to link, share, and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the sales smart action. And we'll see you soon.